Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. It's me, Paul, as always, and I'm joined by Johnny, Steve, and Nate's came in as well on the couch to talk about our Premier League talking points. Uh, we kick things off with Arsenal versus Man United. Arsenal collapsing again. Will we just take the show from the show from last year and just repeat that to save ourselves ten minutes? Yeah, well, we can just clip it from two weeks ago. We can just get past the Arsenal, or the Arsenal bit. I'm not surprised Phil didn't come in so he actually. <laughs> he's probably, he's he's probably still hiding. Good. <laughs> yeah, like the, the, the stats were great. Yeah, but yeah. I'll damn the hell was too. So yeah. yeah. He's just he's out of this world, isn't he? <coughs> you think about you think about how different things would have been if that deal had gone through to Real Madrid, like yeah, yeah. Dodgy, the dodgy fax machine. Yeah, but, but someone was um I don't know a podcast or TV show or something listened to over the weekend and today, um someone said like that Madrid were basically threatening oh well, if you know if you don't sell them now we'll we'll look towards Courtois, yeah, they're probably <laughs> not gonna look towards Courtois. I, I think they're probably gonna look at the hang out. Hashtag how much, cheese, uh, the hair. how <laughs> much market money can we get take out of the bank today? Like how much can we throw at United for him? I genuinely think he's good enough to be, and it might sound ridiculous, he's good enough to be the first million or a hundred million pound yeah. goalkeeper. Goal he's goal. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Like for a goalkeeper. He's keeper, probably <coughs> better than Schmeichel. Yeah, oh, it's definitely, yeah. It's definitely yeah. better than Schmeichel. He's and that's a serious statement, like do you know what I mean? Everyone knows how good Peter Schmeichel was. Yeah. He's he is for me already, and I know he's only won what one Premier League title, I think. Mm. Yeah. But he's the best goalkeeper Premier League I've ever seen. Probably. The best goalkeeper Premier League I've ever seen. I can't say that yet, I'll have to wait till he till he's finished in the Premier League first. I I genuinely no. think already he's the best. I think he is as well. Yeah. Like that, that double save from Sanchez, the one where he and like, yeah, and then he just takes <coughs> his foot out and does like a big tackle at a centre after. That is just out of this world. Like I'm sat there watching, just waiting for the net to ripple. But like it's got to a stage where we're talking about De Gea. It's like talking about Arsenal. You know, you're not surprised. Yeah. But that, that's what I was gonna say to you. Do you not think that Arsenal quite unlucky? The fact that De Gea was just absolutely unbelievable. Because if you think if you look at the chances that he, he made, fourteen saves, which is the most of any keeper ever it's the in a game. Ever. I think it's Tim Krill had it for Newcastle. Maybe no, he Tim broke the record. Was it? I think he broke the record. Yeah, 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 yeah well, it was Tim Krill who had it before. I think it was a yeah. Liverpool against oh, Liverpool. Yeah, every keeper used to play him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what United had at home last yeah. season, where <laughs> every goalkeeper that came to the season. But do you not do you not think that uh, in a way Aston were unlucky? Like they they they've had a couple of decent results lately. Yeah, but they beat Burnley, they beat Huddersfield five now then as well. Yeah, as well. Yeah, well, yeah, but the problem with speaking Spurs is that that's our the biggest game of the season. Sorry? Yeah. That's Arsenal's biggest game of the season, and because they were at home, the fans were right up for it from the start. But with Man United, Arsenal were expecting United to just park the bus, which they didn't really do because United took, he took it to them. You know, Valencia got past Czech. Czech's been a bit suspect the last couple of years because he's Arsenal had, need a goalkeeper. That's, uh, absolutely. I think Arsenal fans will tell you that Arsenal fans yeah. really need a goalkeeper, and they but should never let Chelsea. I do think Arsenal were unlucky because they did have some good chances. That unfortunately, <coughs> De Gea just swallowed up anything that came at him apart from the goal they scored. But which even at that, he's probably confused by what Ramsey was doing. <laughs> well, like that. I think <laughs> Arsenal fans are confused with Aaron Ramsey because he's great in cup finals, but not so great for them in the league. Because yeah. every time he scores, you're like, oh great, some celebrities are about to die. Yeah. Is that the genuinely? I can't remember a weirder assist in Premier League. Oh, well, he's in touch. Do you know what it reminded me of? Did you ever? Did you ever see that assist uh, from Guti? That one time for Real Madrid, exactly. and he does like a back. He goes to shoot, but he does like a back here. Yeah, yeah. it's like unbelievable. It's class, but he actually meant it. Whereas yeah, yeah. Ramsey Cri definitely. Cri <laughs> Cri 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 oh, so good. Cri but yeah. that that assist, if you don't know it, yeah, YouTube it. <coughs> also YouTube the um, Benevento goalkeeper's goal. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Right. Was one of those magic, magic moments, isn't it? Um, well, in terms of United, like. Lingard getting him out of jail again. Well, that out of jail, you know. He's in excellent form, and um, he's got a he's got a role for himself now. And as much as I hate the lad, he's been a very steady performer in the last couple of weeks. It's starting to become, I think, kind of like a G Sung Park. I was about to say he's becoming a, a G Sung Park, a Dar in a different way, a Darren Fletcher, mm -hmm. where if you know have a big game, Jesse Lingard starts. And when United win big games, Jesse Lingard's at the heart of it. Remember the Chelsea game away last year, mm. um, where him and Rashford played as front or played as a front team. And I think it was Chelsea last year anyway, where him and Rashford played as a front team and just terrorised them. 
for the entire game, which is their pace, their industry, and they chased everything down. He works incredibly hard for the team, and he is a good footballer as well. He's, I think a lot of people give him you know, a lot of grief, and I don't think he's the most effective of players when you play against the bottom 10, he blows the ball. He was a counter-attacking player, he played in kind of that front three. He's, he's outstanding, and he's a really important player for United in big games. Yeah. Pogba was quite good as well, for the second in goal. It was a huge loss for the Derby as <coughs> well there. Yeah. But yeah, no, Lingard is almost, because, because United are sitting almost like, it's not, it's not parking the bus anymore, it's, it's a little step ahead of that. They're, they are sitting more, a bit more defensively with, with, a, with a shape, and then they break. And you watch too many times they, they, they broke against Arsenal the weekend. Speed. And that Lingard yeah. is perfect in that role because he's, he almost reminds me of one of these players that, you know, if he has a lot of time to think on the ball, he messes it up. But when it's just a breakaway and it's just, you know, natural instinct with him, he just goes through and he's got a couple of very good goals just from, from breakaways. And Even that goal, he's, he picked up the ball and ran and was at 70 yards and scored mm-hmm. a couple of weeks. Against uh, Wofford. A couple of games yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so th- th- that's, that's his niche now and, you know, he's found himself a role that he'd been kind of in and out of the team for a while, but he now he's turned into one of their key, their key players. Do you see United you know, kicking off from this now? Or I, think, to, yeah. I, I don't think there's anyone kind of really catches it. That's, that's I think um, what we've seen with United is... is Maybe Mourinho will start to figure out how his team can now play in big games. Mm. And I don't think he knew how to set up, set up his team you know, previously in bigger games. But he now sees that he doesn't have to go completely defensive because he can sit deep, Lingard will work back, Martial will work back for him. But when they break, the two of them break, Lukaku breaks, and Pogba breaks at such a pace as well. Pogba is... He has been the player that they signed this season. Whenever he's played this year, he's been the player that they signed. He's just, he's so quick, he's so athletic. His assist for Lingard's goal. Speaking of assists, Martial's assist. He just runs into the box, he just runs into the box though, Pogba. And Cachelli's a big, strong central defender. Pogba just brushes him off like he's, like, like he's better. Mm. He just brushes Lukaku him off. Lukaku came out and said that uh, Cachelli's the hardest defender he's played against. Yeah, and Pogba made him look like a child. In that moment, he just shrugged them off. Um, with actually from the three, it was with me, but it was it a red card because I don't think it was. I think it was a yellow. I think he makes an attempt for the ball. He wins the ball, and it just is unfortunate the way the Bellerin went into the challenge. Um, I mean, <coughs> for me, I can see why people gave it as a red. I didn't think it was. Yeah. But again, it's a grey area because you're always going to get was it a red, was it a not. You know, there's been plenty of incidents this season where you're thinking, was it a penalty? Was it a free kick? Was it in this? Was it in that? I don't think it was a red. Yeah. I think red's harsh, but there's people going to be questioning why wasn't that given as a red and all that kind of thing. I mean, we had that with the Aston Palace the last couple of weeks. I was getting constantly, you know, what do you think? I said, it is what it is. It happened. Move on. Yeah, you were messaging me about it. I was just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just afraid they didn't apply. But again, you know, there was so much made about all that it's sort of thing. Thing, <laughs> it's just yeah, No, but there was so much made That's about it. That's not my business. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, no, but I mean, to be fair, I mean, it depends. People, some will say it was, some will say it wasn't. For me, I don't think it was. Yeah. I can't give you an explanation because I need to see it back again. But when I first saw it, I thought, it's a bit harsh for a red. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was a yellow, to be honest. I can see why the red was given, and mm. as much as it pains me, I think the kid was unlucky, because he does yeah. make an attempt to kind of, that momentum to push out to try and control it. It doesn't goal. seem to be that type of player either. It does, it did look yeah, like that. Yeah, and honestly, he's not one of those type of players. I don't think he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. a bit more of a happy little Larry. Aiden Duffy's comments on him and Garth Crooks's witch hunt. Garth Crooks is a bad Their witch hunt against Paul Pogba is actually embarrassing. Anything coming out of Aiden Duffy's mouth can't be taken But he said, anyway. he said, oh, Pogba looks like a great lad to go on a night out with, but he's not a good footballer. It's like, he is a good footballer, he's a great footballer, he's world class, he's one of the best players in the Premier League. But people go, oh, look, he cost 100 million quid, oh, he should be doing this, he should be doing that. He's not messy because he doesn't play on the right side of a front three. He's a central midfielder and he's a very effective and very He does his job in that. in that. Yeah. He does his job and he does it to a really, really high level. He does it to a higher level than most players in the world can do. Okay, but he's obviously going to be a big loss now. Obviously going to I think fair. Sunday will be a big indication <coughs> as to how close United are to see. Because obviously everybody's... Well, I don't think so because they'll be without Pogba. 
Yeah, I think I think I think Pogba's red card and, and, and follow on his suspension changed. Like we spoke about Mourinho not being as defensive and, and that little step ahead. Yes, it's not. Oh yeah, we are getting the full mini bus on Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. All, that, that, that's we're getting the full bus. Yeah, getting back mini bus. He's actually usually good against City, though. He's yeah. announced a one week loan deal for National Express. <laughs> 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 but, but go back to Pogba. Like, Pogba allows United to make that level, that transition from defensive shape, and then we can be effective on, on the counter attack. Yeah. I think without them. Because pretty much no central player in Premier League is going to keep a Pogba pace. No, no, and look, he, he's pace, you know, he's strength, he's everything. Yeah. And he's running comfortable, charging forward in the ball. We're. United are going to park the bus Sunday as a result. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in our preview show, which you can check out. Later. So, uh, moving on to City. Three, uh, another. Um, two one. So, yeah. Two one, but I didn't say another. Um, that's their third now. So, yeah. they seem to be, you know, they're, they're getting there at the, end, at the end of games now. They have that late goal in them, especially Raheem Sterling. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> doing what they didn't do last season. Which is win games when not playing well. Yeah. Which is they did not do they didn't do this last year. So when they went into the slope, they started to lose games, started to draw games. They're winning games this year when they're not playing well. That's think, it's a scary thought. At some point, they are going to come back into form. I think that's the most scary thing at <coughs> the moment because, as you said, they're not in the best of form, but they're they're just eking out these results. And you, you know, like watching the second half of that West Ham game at the weekend. You're just waiting for something to happen. You're yeah, waiting for a yeah. goal. Even like, at one 0 I thought that was the case. As no, well. they, they they were kind of bit. They were off the pace in the first half, and um, they looked and like, then and set pieces have killed them all season. I mean, um, you know, Bonner, West Ham fans were back when he scored, yeah. and obviously we West Ham are in a free fall. I know as a Palace fan, I've got no, but with Man City, everyone knows if you have a set piece, that's what kills them, because they panic, and then obviously in the second half, Otamendi gets one back. He's thinking, okay. Now City are going to either try and see, eat this out to the last minutes, which obviously they did, or they'll just go and completely muller West Ham, because West Ham are awful at the minute. But well, it's not even, I don't think it's that West Ham are awful as such. It's more West Ham are so void of confidence yeah. that the minute you actually go at them and put pressure on them, you just expect them to fall. You expect well, them to just yeah, that's true. give all you just expect well, them the, to leave. The Everton result against them was a prime example. Like yeah. Everton were in the worst the form they could possibly be in and then they come out and smash West Ham for it, which could Yeah, be. I think you get one or two against West Ham. You get ahead against West Ham. Well they were two up against fall. us and Antonio gifted us a last minute equaliser. And I was at the game and I watched West Ham fan TV across the way from me, watching your man give abuse of my <coughs> fans just like they don't change the result, man. But I mean with West Ham, obviously Moyes has come in and they're expecting a bit of a change and they got a little bit of that with the Leicester game. Yeah. But going going up to Man City Everyone, even before the game, was saying they'll get hockeyed. And in fairness to them, they, they didn't exactly just roll over and take it. They were trying to keep it as respectable they, as possible. They missed an absolute sitter at the end. Oh, of the Jesus. Like, I thought it was quite funny. Is that the irony of Pep, like he's had pretty much an open checkbook and spent an absolute tank load of money. Yeah. But yet he's, ra- he's raving, he's faced up to the board saying, look, you've left me with these defenders. I need another centre-half here. Well, the, pro- the problem is with Pep is he complains about, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. He didn't sign defenders. He signs fullbacks. He spent two hundred million on fullbacks. <laughs> <laughs> this, you play with two fullbacks on the team. I've never seen a team play with three fullbacks, right? You sign three. Signed, signed, I signed like signed Delphi left back yeah. as well. Yeah, and they've ended up with Fabian Delphi left back. Right. Well, Danilo's more right back though. Yeah. Danilo can play both sides, but I think Danilo in the long term, and you'll see him come into it more as I'd say Pep trains him into it. Danilo will end up being the successor to Fernandinho on the field. Yeah. He will train him into being a central midfielder, and that's what he was bought for. Because he was originally a central midfielder when he came to Porto. And he was then reverted to... How do you know? He just ring up Pep on... No, <laughs> because... It's, it's, but that's what he was... That's look, what the consensus was when he saw him. I think long term he's going to be the midfielder. Yeah, because you look up... You look up without getting into it too much, it's another show, but Pep tucks his full-backs into midfield. He yeah. plays inside, inside yeah. center offs, and then the wingers push forward, and he just squeezes and they control the game. That's why Delph... A right footer is playing a left back. He's not playing as a left back. He's playing as a left midfielder. That's why. That's why even Danilo the weekend played yes. left back and took this. Yeah. So that's, that's that's what they do. Yeah. That that's that's a whole another conversation for for us football nerds again. And it's such, yeah. It's such a tactics. It's such a fluid. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of such a fluid formation in the fact that they play with the Bruyne and Silva in the middle. And 
they're so attacking. That's just like oh. essentially because they <laughs> essentially because they have like because they have so much of the ball. One of the fullbacks can become a, like a second defensive midfielder where they become kind of a four in the middle where either Walker tucked in from the right or Danilo or Delph kind of tucked in from the left and becomes that player to kind of float around and make tackles and all. And then obviously when another team breaks, you're in a situation anyway where you've pushed up, you've probably lost your natural shape a little bit, you've lost your defensive shape. So players are covering different positions anyway. So positions as far as wide positions with City do not matter. And they didn't matter at Barcelona either because Alves would tuck in or go forward. Alba would tuck in or go forward. You would end up with Busquets at centre half, PK at right back when the transition happened the other way. But he had players who were intelligent enough, smart enough and good enough. And he's starting to get that City, maybe not at the back yet, but he's starting to get that City where he has those players who are good enough and intelligent enough to slot into those positions when the transition happened. Watch the Chelsea game if you want to have a proper nerd of Pep's porn. Yeah. Uh, watch the Chelsea game. If you want to just just hashtag Pep porn. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Watch back it's trending. Watch, watch back in that Chelsea game. Try and get one of the, the tactical cams from up high and just watch the watch that system that we've just discussed there. It's football yeah. porn. Yeah. It's actually a channel on porno. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, but and um, that's not on the agenda, is it? <laughs> no, no, but like the West Ham's partners are big right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, West Ham, are they are, like are, are they going down? I'll pass it to you first. <laughs> yeah. there. Special mention we'll get into it is uh Nathan Royce anyway, but yeah. in terms of West Ham as a club, are they, are they Um well, January is a big sign for them well for everyone down the bottom mm. but with West Ham obviously they've got money to spend well do they because the Dildo brothers are a bit funny with their money now to be fair Jesus. I mean this is we have the game one one the game one one follow the Premier League as well that's the thing that's they lose they won't want to but they haven't really done anything to stop that I mean yeah but they'll panic they already panicked with getting rid of Village and everything like that bringing in Moyes Um. I don't mean panicking was in getting rid of Village, but more of the bringing in David Moyes part was panicking. And then, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so January, I think they, realistically, if they are, they're serious about building West Ham as a club, they need to spend Well, there's no a building. Of money. You know, the problem that West Ham have is that they don't own the ground. Yeah. So if they do go down, it's going to be really hard to fill the ground in the championship because apart from the mill <laughs> well yeah I mean obviously that you know, be <laughs> well there may not be a stadium in Stratford if that game plays and, uh, that's coming from a Palace fan who also hates Mill by the way I pray for Westfield <laughs> <laughs> Westfield Stratford I think be... with West Ham they're in trouble because the Andy Carroll is Andy Carroll you know, and he's their main focal point when it comes to scoring goals. Because Lanzini, this table is literally made of less glass than Andy Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Connor Wickham are making the same pair of type of glass, but um, yeah, they're a single pane of glass. Yeah, I mean, the Afrosaka wants out, and he over the last couple of seasons was probably one of their better players. He wants out, so they're going to lose him. He literally flew to France to sign for Rennes on deadline day, and they told him he can't go. Yeah. He um, bought a medical that signed the contract. I I do think West Ham are definitely down there amongst the teams that people are saying they're gonna go down like ourselves and Swansea and, and Huddersfield. And if they don't have a good the general window, they're screwed. Yeah. They are screwed. Okay. Um absolutely. Johnny? Yeah, the West Ham strike me as a typical example of a club that's kind of trying to be steady uh, in, in kind of mid table slash above that relegation zone and then trying to spend and try and make that big step. And kind of get ahead of themselves. The step they tried to make was when they had Poyet. Yeah, yeah. Losing him was a was a big like he was an absolute superstar for them. Like he he got them, you know, as well as being a cult hero to the fans. You he know, won them a lot of games. Yeah, so well, that last season of the Berlin played into that as well because the emotion of leaving their home to go to the Olympic Stadium, they had Europa League football on the line. <coughs> Poyet then pulling a strop midway through the season, it just said the whole. They've been a free fall since, really. Yeah. Been, yeah. Because um, it's hard to replace a pilot, you know. And you know they, they've gone with their signings in the in the summer. They've tried to. Arnautovic. Be, yeah, just like he's been an absolute sham for them. For, 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 me, for me, I think like it looks. It looked like Billage had lost the dressing room when Pyatt left. To me. Yeah. I know it's been a long time. <coughs> but it did look to me like yeah. they weren't like. Before they were breaking their bollocks to play from now. Yeah. Right, I think the right was on the wall 
at the end of last season for Bill Lynch. And there was talk to him leaving at the start of the summer. And because he left so early this season, it obviously was on the minds of the owners in summer going, right, well, is he the right man? If he's not the right man, you aren't 100% sure he's not the right man for the club and to bring the club forward. You sack him in June, you sack him in May. You give him and you let a manager come in and buy his players. Yeah. You would have got a good manager at that time of the year with the resources West Ham have. Obviously, they don't own the Olympic Stadium. But they have an Olympic Stadium, they have a massive ground. They have, money. they have money. They have a decent squad there. They've got building blocks like Lanzini and stuff like that there. Who are good players, Winston Reid at the back, who if you can keep fit, quality. Adrian is a fairly decent keeper. Adrian is a good keeper, but instead they kept Billich and signed Joe Hart and had Adrian on the bench. Madness, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like, but he signed, the signs he made, Joe Hart, flopped to Torino, Pep Guardiola just threw him out with City and went, I'd rather well, actually, have... He picked, he picked Bravo with the hot, which says it all. Yeah, I'd rather have Claudio Bravo or a 20-year-old on the bench than have Joe Hart. <laughs> like... When Pep Guardiola was going, you're not good enough to be my third choice goalkeeper. Then, you know, it's probably best not to sign him on loan and go with, oh, look, we've got Randolph, who was okay for them last season, probably a good backup in the Premier League. And Adrian, who's a very good, solid goalkeeper, he brought in a goalkeeper in Hart who makes mistakes. He's deficient to one side with his diving. Um, they just, I don't know. Okay, well, let's move off him and get on to Declan. Um, what's your make of his performance? I mean, Joe Hart's performance. <laughs> um, <laughs> it wasn't a goal, was it? Yeah, no. Uh, Rice, had, Rice seems in a good game. and Whenever he's played for West Ham this season, he's looked decent and he's looked a player with a lot of potential. I don't think he's probably ready for the Premier League yet, but it's good to see him playing and it's good to see that even Moyes coming in now sees a player in him too. When Billich saw a player in him, obviously, he's well as a centre Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think... It's good to see Rice playing games and hopefully he plays more games for them. And you know, if if it ends up being obviously a bonus start with him at the weekend or at the weekend, but if Reed gets back fit and he starts playing with Reed, I think Reed's a good person to learn off because he's a very good player. He's good with the ball he he's a good defender, like but that's the thing, like West Ham are a much better team than Winston Reed's and so mm. So I think if if Rice can continue to learn off that and if West Ham do stay up and he makes a good account of himself maybe he becomes a proper first team player for them by next season. Yeah. I'd like to see him move because I feel like they're pretty far. Mm. Uh, did you did you watch uh <coughs> play? I did, yeah. Um I think seeing young players come through now obviously it's important for the for the team because obviously there's a lot of talk about the old guard in the in the national team kind of needing to be phased out. Yeah. So seeing Rice come up it's like okay, if something were to happen to one of our start start our centre backs you could slowly blood rice it. I'm not saying deliberately just throw him in, but slowly start blooding him in. Yeah. Because the more games he gets... Kevin, like, uh, 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 it's like uh, actually boiling rice. <laughs> oh. I'd, have, uh, I'd have Long and Bernie in him um, yeah, no, at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Not, not just throw him, <coughs> throw him in for a senior cap, but obviously... I'm going to have him in the squad in March. Yeah, exactly. Because obviously, you know... We've got, we've got games coming up where you can afford to play less exactly. experienced it's, players. They're losing games, nothing. really. Yeah. I swear to God, Declan Royce is in the squad and John O'Shea is. I'm just... I'm Paul Chain. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, that was, it just, re, just to <coughs> reiterate what the lads have said, it was refreshing to see him get his opportunity. I do, but I do unfortunately agree with you. I think if getting a partnership with Reid could be the, the making of him at West Ham. Yeah. Um, I think he will struggle if he's not have, have someone the likes of Reid alongside well, him. Even, look, even James, James Collins... James Collins Perhaps. is well, James like, Collins a very good defender and Rice has pace to cover him. So yeah, yeah. It, it's just it's just critical that he gets game time and like who knows what's going to happen even in January if like, they could they could sign another couple of players and he could be out to completely. But you know, refreshingly, see him get a chance. Even exactly. if he end up on loan in the championship would be the worst thing in the world. Yeah. If play. But look, if you're keeping Aguero quiet in games, I don't think you need to be going to the championship. No. Um, let us know your thoughts with Declan Rice in the comments. He's been huge <coughs> online contingent raving about him so uh, let us know your thoughts on that um okay moving on to uh liverpool johnny take the take the wheel here well, is salah is salah do, do you want to go home lads hearing about right and loose i can stay all night <laughs> is, is salah he's gonna say here listen he's not even saying he's <laughs> yeah. gonna enjoy it is uh salah the best premier, uh, player in the premier league right now yes um he's a, a chelsea re- a, chelsea, a chelsea reject who can't finish 
He's into too bad, is he? Um, no, Salah has been a complete breath, breath of fresh air. There's, he's in, like obviously he's the top goal scorer. He's winning Player of the Month awards for fun. He's breaking stats for fun. Um, he's definitely the design of summer anyway. That's, that's, that's I would, is an he, argument too. Even, even with my huge Liverpool boys, I, I think you will you will struggle to find a better sign in this summer. I can't believe summer. you're not fetching for a cute cock right either. No, no, he's been a breath of fresh air, and what, what I loved um, this weekend about him is, and it's something that he was accused of in the past, is just being literally didn't have the in game intelligence or whatever. There's been a quite high profile BBC presenter in the summer described him as pretty much brain dead, and I think he answer, he's answered a, a lot of that really. What she's. Uh, is that because he's not in? Perhaps, yeah. perhaps. But Possibly. Um, not proven in the Premier League. So yeah, not, it, not exactly. Like right the now. Italian league has gone free fall. But no, but what she's, <coughs> what she's moving for Liverpool's third goal just after half time. And that, that for me shows the most exciting thing about Salah. So we go on a breakaway. And for those of you that are watching, we pretty much just a, 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 a counter that straight down the pitch. And Salah has the ball and he's running at pace. But instead of just doing like we've seen so many Premiership players that are like Walcott, for example, they get the ball, they sprint as fast as they can and then they get a nosebleed and it's oh what do I do now sort of moment and it's just you know breaking the lines every place but yeah, fair play to you, you just summed up T.L. Walcott's career in about 15 yeah. seconds well, that's him that's all there is <laughs> but you, watching Salah come through he, uh, he makes a move <coughs> he makes a movement to cut inside like there's a big there's a big space in front of him he makes a movement to cut in cut into the left hand side he takes another touch he brings it back and into the space then that he's generated by his movement he plays a perfect ball back to uh, Firmino, who's just finished yeah. it in. That for me is. He owed him it from last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was Manny, but. Uh, he, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. That for me is the most exciting thing about Botsala. Yes, he's born on pace. Yes, he's shown he can finish now, despite a little wobble at the start of the season. But that in game intelligent is what brings players to the, to the next level. And, like, you look in the Premier League, there's De Bruyne or whatever, but I'm, I'm, you look at European football at the moment, there isn't a player, I don't think, in better form. Than Salah. Uh, I think he's got better stats than, than Messi and Ronaldo. Yeah, like both of them have a little bit of a wobble at the moment. He's like at the moment in like for for for, for form or for not. There's, I'm not going to go into it, but there's there's I a mean, hands probably between him in terms of just players in general in Europe. Probably between him, Cavani, and Lorenzo Insigne this season is probably mm-hmm, yeah. the three four players. And they're like they're they're like you know you see the the Real Madrid and the, the Egyptian watch coming out all Real Madrid are interested in Salah. He's getting that stage where it's like Ronaldo, Messi, and not in current form, but you know that stature of players. And then yeah. there's a little bunch of players underneath who are that next step away. I think yeah. he's top. He's pretty much top of that pile. We'll get on. Who we will get on to as well. And I think the best player in Premier League is but on like on Salah. I think he came. Came from Roma and a lot of people had like a preconceived opinion of him from his time at Chelsea, mm-hmm. which was ridiculous because for the last couple of years in Italy he's been unbelievable. He made Jacko um, good. Yeah, he made Jacko into I a player. Jacko is a very a bad player. Um, and smashing player. But Salah, for this Liverpool team, is absolutely perfect. And when he came to Liverpool, and said it as well that he will be really effective and he will score goals because he can break with them and he can just use his pace he is a good finisher he showed it wrong but he's an outstanding finisher people who kind of wrote him off after the first few weeks it's it's wrong to judge a player on his first few weeks in the Premier League it's probably wrong to judge a player on his first half of the season in the Premier League because obviously we've had Egyptian forwards in the Premier League have great first halves of the season What's before Amir Zaki yeah Amir Zaki is like the big case of point there <laughs> where will Salah go home at Christmas time and ever come back well I think he'll probably be back and um, he's a I think he's one of the best players in the Premier League and on form this season as a whole he's been the best player in the league and I don't think if you were going right I want to take a player at their best for one game out of the Premier League that he's even in the top five He's probably scraping into the top ten. Yeah, but um, look, I think top ten is a little fair. Like, look at look at his stats. Four games in November, he scored nine goals. He's yeah. uh, it's 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 just started December now, and through at the end of November, he'd already scored more goals than the top Liverpool scorer had for the last four seasons. Like he's smashing stats. He's literally yeah. just smashing them. And I feel there's more to come with him. And our counter attack with him spearheading it and the, the, the intelligent players alongside him is proven to be very dangerous and I think will prove to be very dangerous. How do you feel about Salah? Me? Um, I think Chelsea fans may regret calling him a Chelsea reject in a few in a few years' time because Chelsea don't want to keep Hazard but 
Pedro looks to me to be a bit of a flop considering he still can't get in the team whereas someone like Salah's gone away from the Premier League come back and everyone's thinking and why was he sold in the first place? Yeah, same it's Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne as well Yeah, so. again and, and Chelsea fans are kicking <coughs> up now because they're all saying you know well, De Bruyne wasn't good enough mm. you know, I, think, I think they're regretting saying that now because you know, don't drink water in terms of the field though. Well, yeah, exactly They, they <laughs> paid over the odds for him as well, didn't they? Yeah. They paid over the odds for him yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I think Salah's arguably been one of the best one of the best signings in recent windows for any club in, in the league. Because obviously, unless you've got the Agueros or the De Bruyne's coming in, that's the standout signing. Everyone was knocking Liverpool because of this, that they don't have any defence. You don't need it just scoring goals more than more than the opposition. I think to like the last two summer windows they bought very very well. With yeah, Mane and, and Salah. Yeah. Salah. But they the pains me to say. I think the Kiko Martina versus Salah is not going to be very happy, happy for me. Kind of people give anyone versus lots Salah credit. or Mane is it doesn't end well. <laughs> lots of credit, like people have given Liverpool. Oh, good business and win those stuff. Mane, Salah, Keita coming in the next uh, or next year as well. He's a very good player when player. when he keeps his head. He's got what four red cards and one thing already. Yeah, we need, yeah. We need that you just need to calm him down. But he's a cracker player, but. The same criticism will still haunt Liverpool. It's the fact that you played that game with Emery Chan and Jeannie Wattel oh, yeah, as the defence. It's, just, it's, just it's Liverpool can be as good as they want to go for with Coutinho, Firmino, Mane, Salah, all cracking players, all world class players. Basically, maybe Firmino's a little bit less than that, but he's a very, very good player as well. Um, but Liverpool won't win the league title. Liverpool won't challenge for a league title. If they don't have a defence. We need a centre half and we need a, a number six <coughs> desperately. Yeah. And I would argue we need another goalkeeper as well. Definitely. Yeah, percent uh, Um and until we get that, we're not gonna grind out the the like we spoke about City grinding out wins, we're not gonna be able to grind out wins against smaller teams unless we get that strong spine. But the interesting thing is like we spoke about Mane and Salah being um excellent signings. Yes, they'd be wonderful signings. But the funny thing is they weren't our first choice targets. It was Godse and it was Dakar. Uh, of Dortmund's uh, doctor, yeah. sorry. Um, it's, so it's just it's it's funny how things work out, isn't it? Yeah. But how do you see you know go from here? Obviously, you you say doing not not so bad in the league now. Obviously, five one against Brighton is not a bad scoring considering how good Brighton have been defensively our, now. Our defensive lineup for the game as well. Yeah. So like, what do you see from here kicking on? Like, <coughs> I'm, I'm hoping. Do you, do you feel that these, these are gonna get top off? Yes. Okay, where in the top four? Second. Second. I think I think I think that's that's going to get a lot of a draws from from around. But I think we've had our wobbles. <laughs> um, you 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 think you think about last season where the whole season fell apart was January. Yeah. We lost Coutinho to an injury, that's and then we lost Mane to the Cup of Nations, and, and then had, injury. And then yeah, and then we just fell to absolute bits. We've made a number of changes in our, last, in our last three games. There's two sides to the Liverpool. There's the back and the defence that's the problem and we're stuck with playing two midfielders on Sunday. But, but, but the top why line, was Ragnar Clavin on the bench? Because he's ill and he's only the centre-half we have the club pretty much now. Yeah, but, but I, even if he was ill, if he was good enough to be on the bench, you could have given him 60 minutes. Nah, no, like, he could have he he played <coughs> a push come to shove. You know if you're sick, you're, you can do a job yeah. and you're not going to get any worse or whatever. It's just an inconvenience. Mm-hmm. You have to be there. But like I think like going forward we, we've made a number of changes and you know, Chamberlain's starting to settle in, Manny didn't play at the weekend, Sal was rested against the, the previous game. You know, there there is options in front and I don't think we're going to have that slump of January because Klopp has changed it up and stirred up very, very smartly. We've had a little bit of wobble, like the the, the first Spurs game is infamous where we felt a bit at uh, at Wembley. But since then, like if you contrast the two forms, like since that game Spurs have got five points out of out of eighteen. We've got sixteen, and it was a fluke goal equaliser against Chelsea that stopped us getting <coughs> on top. Of, I I feel if we can get a centre half in 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 the window, I think I really think we can push on because there is you you're you're seeing like I watch Liverpool obviously watch every game. You guys mightn't see it as much, but there is a tactical now starting to come to our team. It's no longer the complete in your face full court squeeze heavy it's a, metal football. It, yeah that's that we used to play heavy metal football where we would not quite pep palm but no, it's not quite pop you know, it's a bit more set of foreplay, you know, it's with, <laughs> oh, with, with, a, with a dramatic finish. Oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we used to Hopefully play... Hopefully not a Martin Tyler style <laughs> finish, because yeah, that might be nervous. 
No, we never, <laughs> we never celebrate a Liverpool goal. But we used to play, you know, we'd start off and we'd play. We've seen so many examples last season. We start off 100 miles an hour, in your face, pressing, counter-pressing, get a goal, and then come 60, 70 minutes, we're gassed. We're gone, and we're absolutely gone, then we hang on. We're no longer playing that style of football anymore. It's a bit more settling deeper. It's a little bit more, you watch, watch the way Gomez has kind of played right back slash another centre defender. He's tucked in. We have a bit more shape. Fullbacks don't bomb forward as much. We sit, and then we let the counter, the guys up front play away. So we've got a style of football that's a lot more effective. Whatever you say about Klopp, he's learning from his mistakes in English football. And I think we're developing, I think something special is happening with that, with that squad at the moment. And with a little bit more, I think we can really go up, go up the march of the table a little bit. Okay. Well, you mentioned Spurs there, so I just kind of want to move on to them. Yeah. Um, they do can one. I just ask us now, for the record, I don't think they're going to be within single figure points of Chelsea and either City. But yeah, it? You don't think we're good enough than Chelsea? No. Over the course of the season? No. Well, you can get on to that with We'll get on to the Chelsea. Spurs won, uh, what won again? Spurs dropped the points again. Yeah. And how, how do you feel about Ah, Spurs. Take the them weak, Nick. Spurs are getting Spursy early. And if you know any Spurs fans, they'll tell you getting Spursy isn't a shock to them. Last season, obviously, last season at the lane, everything got emotional and they had a really good home record. But they went away to Watford, who were relatively shocking at home at the Vic- at Vicarage Road. They're not their best at home. Mm. Good, um, very good team very good team absolutely but at home the Watford fans will say they're surprised when they get results at home when they beat West Ham they weren't keen on beating them they thought you know you never know but yeah. with Spurs I think since they beat Dortmund and apparently won the Champions League Real Madrid and won the Champions League apparently it's gone to their heads a bit because yeah, when they beat us at Wembley like there were Spurs <coughs> fans saying how did we win that because yeah. obviously Gazaniga had the game of his life against us, and I thought it would be that they you know, had the game of his life against us. But since then, they've tailed off dramatically because they're not getting the results they used to get when they play, play the way they play. Um, it's funny because you wouldn't expect that from Spurs now. They're not the Spurs team of old where you'd expect Spurs to to, make, to muck it up. You know, Arsenal would like Spurs now. Arsenal muck it up, and everyone's thinking that's not a shock anymore. Whereas Spurs are the team everyone expected to, to make a mess of it. And they've been regularly consistent last season and at the start of this season. But now they seem to have gone back to the Spurs of old, where you can't predict what scoreline they're going to have every week. I think there's two parts, two parts of Spurs um, that have been issues in like the loss in form. The first one being they're tactically inflexible. Um, maybe formation will change, but the way they play doesn't change. And teams will eventually... Managers in the league, especially to come up against Marco Silva, Wofford, who can set up a team tactically to play it and get some sort of, for the most part, will get something out of a game or, you know, will at least look good in a game. And he knew how to play against Pochettino, Pochettino's system because Pochettino only plays one system. The way he plays, it's very predictable how the attacking players are going to settle. Defensively, fine, that's different, that's up to your own players initiative in the forward areas Spurs in their forward areas are very predictable the movement is predictable they don't have frightening pace anywhere apart from maybe Sun and even at that he's not that quick so they try and play through you a lot of the time and good teams will just crowd that area not necessarily the midfield but the final third they will crowd that area and just make it difficult for Spurs to find space it's difficult for Spurs to find space they won't win games and on the second point to it Toby Alvaro is also a massive miss for them because not just defensively, but going for going forward with the way he passes yeah. the ball, he's one of the best central defenders in the league, and they do miss him massively. I think the big thing with Spurs is, <coughs> although they have a lot of very good attacking players, they are so top heavy reliant on Kane, and if Kane isn't, yes, he's still he's relatively <coughs> a decent scoring record, but. He he's been you know he's had a couple of little nig- niggly little injuries. He hasn't been as effective in his all round game, and they literally have nobody else to play up front. Mm. You know, Lorenzo. You know, Lorenzo. I don't know why they signed him to be fa- to be fair. He's not going to play him at all. Well, he's, what I was going to say is, he's not a bad player. Like. If if um if they don't finish in the top <coughs> in the top four, they're in serious danger of losing Kane, Ali, these type of players. Pochettino, Pochettino, especially. I think that's the yeah. best one to lose. Pochettino, Oliver Ireland. Yeah, you know, the, list, the list goes on and on. But yeah. they, they kind of, they remind me of a little bit of Liverpool last season when we were on our, in our slump. As in, 
they do play nice kind of possession football. They have, have a lot of the ball. But as you said, teams are starting to park the bus a little bit. Uh, it's not they, about parking the bus. It's kind of just you can let it. Spurs play to a point because Spurs aren't really going to get in behind you if you play a deep line. So if your back four plays a deep line, the rest of your team can play in a normal fashion. And then when the ball comes from their midfield and <laughs> from their attacking players, suddenly the defensive line pushes up, the midfield pushes back, and then you crowd. And that's what Silva did with Watford at the weekend. He crowded them. Silva so got the ball in the final third, he crowded them, won it back, and then they broke it with Charleston. And that's how they did it. That's how Sanchez got sent off. That's how Watford caused them all the trouble. Was just they crowded them, won the ball back, and in the transition, the core was playing past then for Charleston. Alfred Charleston was just going at Spurs, win a free kick, put a cross into the box, get Sanchez sent off. <coughs> that's what that's what teams will continue to do to Spurs, and that's what United did to Spurs. They in a different way, but tactically they found them out. And it's happened a few times this year, and Spurs need to really, really look at changing the way they play a little bit and the type of players they have. Lamella could be a really important player for coming back because he is a bit different to anything else they have. It's yeah, it's it's a bit like this <coughs> last season when we didn't have money. Everything is in front. It's nice little possession football, but there's no penetration. There's no one breaking the lines. And Lamella might he's a bit different than the fact that he's kind of a bit more kind of run, run and direct. But they are they are like the, despite what the media say and they've, they've got away with Scott Scott Light. Yeah. I think in the media, but they they are in trouble. They need to get a bit of form uh, quickly, or they're going to really really struggle, and they'll find it hard. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Chelsea versus uh, Newcastle. Newcastle are fucked, but in a more, <laughs> in a more positive note. <laughs> so that, that's Newcastle. What's the true Jordy's video? Yeah, it's what's the true Jordy talk about Newcastle? Though. That explains everything. Yeah. Also, if you ever want to come to Dublin for the weekend, come on couch. Yeah, so. We'll bring you out. <laughs> I'm going to show you the time. Quiet point. But, um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I, like, even Rafa came out and said like, he, he doesn't think there's going to be funds or anything there in uh, January. If I was in Newcastle. Yeah, not to take over. I know from having gone through with, you know, obviously on a much smaller scale, gone through with Portsmouth um, during the summer, the way it works now with the timing of it and all, there probably will be no money in January because there'll be a handover period and, all these due diligence periods and Newcastle fans need to hope that's done by kind of May time and um, when they can do it for the summer because there is Hashtag weird, pray for Newcastle. There is weird <laughs> legal ramifications and transfer embargoes with stuff where you're not able to sign players for fees when there's no proper owner and everything. So Newcastle might be in a lot of trouble in January because they might lose one or two that you could see people coming in for the sales or something like and that. Reno as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, well we've been talking a lot about <coughs> pornos and everything else and you said once Hazard pops up, you're going to cream yourself. And it's, it's you've had a bit of explaining to do with the Johnny here about your uh, Liverpool. Yeah, look, 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 Hazard is on a different level of football player to so unfortunately. He's, Hazard, he's proved it over a longer period. Yeah, when Hazard, when Hazard's at his best, Eden Hazard is up there with Neymar, Ronaldo, and Messi. He is genuinely that good talent wise because when he plays well, you can't touch him. He just. He will knock the ball outside, he'll run past you, he'll flick it through your legs, he'll put one in the top corner. The Penenka. Yeah, the Penenka penalties. And you see it when he's got <coughs> confidence running through his veins like that. He's very, very difficult to stop. And Chelsea are very difficult to stop as a result because even if you do well against them for 90 minutes, he'll probably come out with one or two moments of magic and beat you. Where, and where, where do you see Chelsea finishing, keeping Hazard and Morata fit? If Hazard and Morata stay fit, Christensen stays fit at the back, and Aspilicueta stays fit at the back, and obviously lots of his, but if Kante stays fit as well, I could challenge City for the in the second half of the oh, season. I could, think, I could see Chelsea going on a run, um, on a big run. If Hazard stays fit and stays in this form, he's very hard to stop for anything. He's shown that in the years that Chelsea have won the league. Mm. He has been the key cog in the wheel. People might say Kante from the league last year. It wasn't, it was Hazard. Hazard was winning the games. Kante might have been doing a really good job in midfield, but Hazard was winning the football matches. Can't do it in the season where he's played the league as well. Enough, but, uh, yeah, on. like he's you starting to do it now. Yeah, he's starting to do it now. Like, like, <coughs> nobody has ever any doubts about Hazard's ability. It's yeah, just, yeah, it's mentally, it's just can he, can he keep it going? I, I do agree that he, he is an excellent player, and they've found, the system they've stumbled on now of him playing behind Morata works very very well and if you can't keep those two players fit and working off each other like there's a huge contrast between Chelsea with 
um, Rado up front than compared to having Costa up front. Costa was up front and it's me, 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 and that's it. The, the show is completely about me. What Rado will run all day He will run all the way down. He'll bring, them, he'll bring players into the game. How Madrid let him go, I do not know. But um, that's in a very effective system with, the, with the, those two guys. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> obviously Chelsea now are in a position where they've got Morata, and that's a big sign. If they're losing Costa to Atletico, then Chelsea fans aren't losing sleep on that because Costa was great for winning them the league, but he wasn't at the pendable, whereas Morata is banging them inconsistently. Obviously, when he's not played, Chelsea look quite toothless up front. Um, you can have a snowball off a rope. Huh? You could have a snowball off a rope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well. batch you I, <coughs> I feel for him because the talent is there. It's just he just I don't think he's ready to be an outright starter for Chelsea. Yeah. It's different at Marseille where the expectation for him is to simply just score enough goals to get them into the top, top end of the three, top three. Yeah. 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 Whereas the Premier League, if you play for Chelsea, you have <coughs> to be the leading striker. If you yeah. sign for Chelsea for the money, the they targets to score nearly every game. Yeah. And obviously, um, Morata came in. He didn't do too badly at that so far, really. Mm-hmm. No, scoring, no. scoring every game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Morata is clearly a great signing for Chelsea because, as I said before, losing Costa, you would think from a goals perspective, is a big loss. Not so much on the playing side because no one liked playing against Costa. He was an animal. You know, very few people got the measure of Costa because he was always in your face and nasty and a certain way I'm not going to well, say. Well, Trump. Well, that's a polite way of putting it, yeah. But I um, very new at the one. Yeah, yeah Damien Delaney. Well, that's a, well, that's the, the same. Well, that's the same way as Andrew Herrera now said to shut down Eden Hazard. Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah um, it was a good time he's had to do it. He did it. Killer point, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> to bring it back to what's happening. <coughs> I think if Chelsea can keep their key players fit, your Kante's, your Morata's, your Hazards, they will be up there. But Chelsea's injury record lately has been really poor. Yeah, and that's kind of killed them because obviously last season they got away with it because they had no Champions League football. So they weren't playing Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday. They had rest breaks where they could get players back in time. There's more depth in the Chelsea squad this year, but the same problem is still there. I think it's there with any team. I think it's also there with City if the Bruyne was getting injured. They lose a Hazard, they lose a Morata, they're in trouble. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. If they can keep their key players fit, they will be up there. <coughs> yeah. It's just, can the players that are on the bench and then amongst the reserves, can they make the step up in their absence? I mean, you could probably put Asper Aguero up front to get your seven round goals. Well, yeah, he's a big defender. It's just that role. Just for all seal, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we're moving on uh, to uh, Everton. Um, <coughs> see, with Sam coming in. Big Sam, Sam, Big Sam and Little Sam. What? Big Sam and Little Sam. It's time for Paul yeah. Crane now. Uh, <laughs> here's a is it is it uh, two with tickets in and Rooney as well coming back into form? It seems to be a revival there. Like a week ago, it was a relegation scrap. Now they're it's all doom and gloom. Tenth place, and I was one of the ones who was like very very worried. Mm. Like I literally, I couldn't see us getting a win. Never mind a goal. Mm. I'd say wait, I'd, I'd say that might be we'll get on to obviously, but Wayne Rooney's goal is one of the best goals I've seen in the Premier League ever. Yeah, that was a that, that, that goal, was a that strike. That was but he's just, he's just, like for me, I, I never had any <coughs> doubts that he's been quality f- from watching the games. Yeah, A lot of people <coughs> criticising from, from the outside looking in who haven't watched the games to just go by what pundits say on TV. He, he, he's been our best player. He's creating chances for players. and you know, We haven't had a striker, but he's playing all these balls in for people. Yeah, And now he's... Uh, and there's no one there because there's no striker. He's playing for a now, he's, now he's for playing a deeper. Yeah. He's he's playing these passes and look at the goal, the second goal for Calvert Lewin. He plays yeah. him in there, and then he's, he's making also goals a very for him. player. Yeah, he's what, been a fine. What a yeah. I th- I genuinely think he's a really talented player. I think he's good. Not prospect. yet. Not he's raw. He's very very very. He's raw, but I think he's a good. He's the makings of a really good player. And, and but I think he just needs to keep playing. He needs and at least goal. two more years. Before he starts in uh, really de- developing to a good striker, he's yeah. he, he's so much there. <coughs> not like Lukaku, you you could throw in and. Um, oh, I'm not saying he's Lukaku, me. but I'm saying he's the making of a really really good player, and I think he just needs to play games. You can see it; he's confident when he scores goals, and you know he it's moves. Some celebration, on him. Yeah, <laughs> does it all more. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, because he promised tubes he'd do it, and he did it. And Sigurdsson as well. What do, what do you think at the minute though of Everton's like defensive four four of it's, Kenny Holgate Williams? It's strange because they've kept two of them. Danny Alves Martina. I I I'm, I I'm frightened of the past this weekend of uh, Salah or Mane coming up against 
Cuco Martina. I'm not really that worried about John Joe Kenny because you know what you'll get with him. And he probably had his best game for us yeah. against Huddersfield. And he's starting to really show. Whereas Kuman was saying that he wasn't ready. Whereas Allardyce is coming out and saying that he's one of the finest young fullbacks he's ever seen. Yeah. Now, whether he's saying that just for his confidence. Because he knows that's, Cowles and stuff back for another month. That's, <laughs> that's one thing, you know. But yeah, um, I look at John Joe Kenny. Everyone's been crying out for him to start since the start of the season because no one wants a Martina in there. Baines is injured now, so someone has to play left back because they have no. They left. Cal, uh, Callum Connolly got to Ipswich and uh, um, Brendan Galloway got to Sunderland. So they were with now, which was the most stupid thing. And Luke Garvin's not in the squad either. <coughs> so we're looking at all these players. It's the same as the striker situation. <coughs> yeah, it's and, ridiculous. Uh, Nias, but Nias was back, but he was, he was dropped. Yeah. Um, at the weekend in Calvin Lewin did they take his locker away? <laughs> Sam come in and take yeah, the locker that's away that's what it means just, <laughs> Sam came in just ripped the suit straight off <laughs> get back in your track suit I, I, think, I, 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 I think yeah and he has a, a big role to play the season yeah, which is yeah. weird you wouldn't have said that in the, in the, in the summer but, is, uh, is that down to lack of options though or just because of his ability? I think the lack of options has proven that he has ability if that makes sense I mean, I get you. because well, Sorry? Good answer. <laughs> but it it's, is. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's not, it's not, it's not really but that's what I mean. But he, he chases down everything. He makes defenders make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And that's how a lot of his goals have been scored. <coughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're not like they're bizarre goals. Yeah. Missed the goal against was a, it was a, it came in off his ass. Yeah. It fell yeah. against yeah. off his ass. <laughs> it was just there. <laughs> it just happened, yeah. It's I think it was the Watford game. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was yeah. the first goal against Watford. And that was the thing that changed the game. He scored the goal at the end of the game against Arsenal. We lost 5 2, but he still got another goal. You know what I mean? He chases down these lost causes, which Calvert Leon wasn't doing up until the last game. So I think Nias coming in and doing that has given Calvert Leon a bit of a kick up the arse that he needed too. Sigurdsson seems to have gotten a really big kick up the arse, but I also think that with the late, or sorry, with early Europa League stuff, I don't think Sigurdsson <coughs> really got a chance to come in and get fit. And I think you're only seeing, starting to see Sigurdsson get fit now. Yeah. And you're starting to see the real Sigurdsson well, yeah. pull off tricks. If, and yeah, if ever a player is going to try under Sam Allardyce and Sigurdsson, just set pieces alone. Like he's going to be practising set pieces. But he's getting on the score sheet now as well from open play a lot. Yeah, well, that, that would be like the kicker in the episode of The Sims, yeah. where Roy Legs just eventually just going to fly off as he takes a free kick. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, like, I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm not. I'm never confident about Anfield looking for it, but like going forward, I'm quite comfortable that Allardyce will take us up the league, and I think we'll finish the top half. So that's yeah. kind of if with me forever right now. I'm not getting carried away, but I'm also not doom and gloom anymore. No, Allardyce will You're definitely keep you solid, and obviously I know because he was with us last season. He's not. Don't expect pretty football because you never get it. Yeah, I don't care. I mean, it's, no, no, it's I'd rather have not pretty football and win than just again, watching the shite know, and no, no, uh, it's no, no, it's hard to play crap and win than play yeah. brilliant and lose. So, with Allardyce, you can expect that if he's not getting the levels he expects, it won't be a case of, ah, oh, that's all right, lads. No, he will test strips out of any player that doesn't perform. Because yeah. we had that a few times. We, well, I think it was Sunderland the game. He literally tore the whole dress. Whereas I think Kuman was quite fond of the old boys club and wasn't <coughs> giving the players a bit of a talking to when things weren't going well, as you've seen with your Europa League campaign. So Allardyce is definitely the, the man to come in and stop what's clearly been a mutinous rot, which is you know, obviously given Everton the results they've been getting. Well, the one thing I noticed at the weekend was with Sammy Lee, he actually was not afraid to bollock the players, whereas Kuman's brother, Urban, whatever his name is, he never, he never said anything to them. And then Martinez, coaches. He, they never said that into the players. Yeah. It was all nice, nice, nice. And they haven't been properly, you know, Kuman looks like a fella who, you know, you wouldn't like to come in at half time or full time losing. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't, he, he just doesn't he look looks like a man who was very, very red. Like yeah. he was angry. Yeah. 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 <coughs> well, that's it. Allardyce and Sammy, yeah. they're old school British managers, British coaching. They know, <coughs> they're not happy, they'll let you know. They won't yeah. mince their words and go, no, that's all right. No, they'll, 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 they'll tear into you. But I think that's good to get a reaction from the players because they need that. Yeah. And, you know, it'd be interesting to see now what happens with when the likes of uh, Balassi, Coleman, McCarthy, mm. and what happens with Ross Barkley as well happens. So, personally, I'd like to see Ross Barkley stay. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see, see how that plays out. Yeah. I wanted to kind of move on then to uh, Palace. Yeah. Um, they're starting to get a lot of results now. They're, well, they're starting to gain points. Which is massive. Which is yeah. something because you, wear it, 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 you look at it, mm-hmm. something you wear it down and start. Yeah. Well, yeah, because obviously we brought in De Boer and that was 
the most pointless exercise ever. Unfortunately for us, actually, he brought through a young lad that I wanted to see more of Lumeca. But yeah, you know, obviously, we got a win over Stoke in the last minute. I've never loved a last minute winner more from Sacco. Um, then there was the draw away at Brighton. The less said about what happened at that game, the better. But the game against Pardew, I thought, of all, of all people, it has to be Pardew, doesn't it? It has to be. It just has to be. But obviously, picking up points now in Swansea and West Ham are below us now, it's nice to see us moving up the table rather than getting good performances and not getting the results. Where we're playing awful now, but we're getting those results. And <clears throat> I wasn't that big on Hodgson coming in, to be honest. I thought, if anything, I would have assumed the ball given more of <coughs> a shot because he only managed to bring in Riedewald, Fossi Mensa, and Loftus Cheek. And then Saka was brought in by Hodgson because Parrish bottled it in terms of what fans wanted. We all were saying, if we have to sell, if we're to sign someone and sign a striker, we can live without Sacco. Yes, Sacco was a massive part of why we stayed up last season, but he's not the be all and end all. Mm -hmm. If we lose Benteke, we've got nothing up front. Because Wickham's out injured, Ladapo is a youngster who I don't think is ready for Premier League football. He's doing well in the under 23s, but that's nothing to read about. Obviously, we let go of Campbell in the summer, which again, I'm not going to cry about, but the fact that we let a striker go without replacing him, I was thinking that sounds ridiculous but picking up results now it's it's looking better and obviously we came through that mini run of having Man City, Man United and Chelsea uh, September, October and I thought oh, why? Just why? Um, obviously winning the, the Chelsea game got us our first three points of the season then we picked up a point at West Ham and then uh, we've been picking up points since then so it's looking better obviously we'll see how we fare against Bournemouth on the weekend where I don't know to be honest with you because yeah. Bournemouth and Palace have always been a bit of a funny, <coughs> funny game to predict, but it's good to see us getting results, especially now where we've got Zahar and Menteke back, because Wilf being injured after, during the Huddersfield game killed us, mm. because to be fair, Wilf's been our most creative outlet. Loftus Cheek has really started to impress me now, but Wilf has clearly had the freedom of sell as well for a long time now, because obviously when he came back from Man United, there was all that, oh, he's a waste of money and all this, and now people are saying actually, fair play to Zahar, he's really improved his game, and obviously, I think he's our top scorer this season, which yeah. which says it all. Yeah, well, I just wanted to say, John, you, you've been a Liverpool fan, and you've, you've, you've experienced Hodgson as a manager. Do you see a point where, you know, I know they're going through a good run now, but do you see a point where they're going to gonna go? I try or to, do you think it'll just... I try to get rid of that that, <coughs> that period of my life that doesn't... Does the the Kenny Dalglish period now? No, the Kenny Dalglish period, period started okay, and then kind of the arse kind of came off it, really. And, you know, it, well, like... Well, Hodgson though, Hodgson came in from Fulham and he had done a really good job at Fulham. But was it a case of obviously Palace are a bigger club than Fulham? But well, mm. they are. It's, it's, well, they are. I don't know. They are. No, I would have to agree as well. I think Palace are a bigger club than Fulham. A lot more. Well, actually. come on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, they, like the step up for Hodgson to Liverpool is probably a little bit too far. I don't think he was ever in that level. Well, he managed, manager. He managed Minton to Milan. Yeah, yeah. No, but at a very he different time. He a very different time. Yeah. 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 No, he, he, Hodgson <coughs> was like the old dinosaur of the schoolyard. It was everything that was wrong with the, the ownership at the time. <coughs> uh, it was the wrong appointment. He was so out of his depth. He played horrible, horrible football. And his signings were brutal. Like Paul Konczewski. How would that lad ever play for Liverpool? I don't know. Christian Paulson. Christian Paulson. <laughs> Etc. Etc. Um, He's on Maxi Rodriguez. No, Rafa signed him. No, no, sorry, yeah. Um, you know, it just it was just horrible, horrible. Sure down. Down. No, Kenny did. Kenny got him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't about there at the time. Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. No, the stats were amazing. All that. That was that whole money ball effect. Yeah. Uh, with Kamali. Um. No, it was a horrible, horrible time, and he was completely out of his depth. He didn't understand the club. He made some stupid statements in the, in the press. You know, he just it was just all in all an absolute fuck up from start to finish with him, and mm. it was just laughable really that he managed to. And it sums up everything that's wrong with the FA that he managed to get the England job after that. Like, we we joked at the time like Liverpool. There hasn't been that many very many seconds in um, Liverpool managers, but and you know that we've always been always oh, sport the manager etc etc. So the kind of get around clause for Hutchin was. Not we want Hodgson out, it was Hodgson for England. That was kind of the champ from the cup at the time. Yeah. And it actually turned out to be true, which was the scariest thought ever. And then he managed to put 
<laughs> thought it was a good idea. I know I keep going on about but Harry Kane taking corners <laughs> it's, it's just just madness for me. And I, I I don't understand it how how we managed to keep getting jobs, but no, it was just a bad bad time. And I there's, there's no way. Uh, he look he's getting a bit of results here now, but you know he's not the long term option. Yeah. Do you think he could keep his up? Um. <coughs> Well, again, it depends on January, as I said, with West Ham. If we have a decent window where we bring in the players we need, short term, yeah, but Parrish's obsession with trying to play pretty football will kill us because obviously bringing in De Boer, that was the whole point, was to try and play this attractive brand of football that we can't really afford to play because we've still got players like James MacArthur and um, James Tompkins playing for us who are play, or are players that can play like that. Reedwood can play from the back. Sacco, if he doesn't make a complete brain fart of things, can play like that because that back parts for the Chelsea game, I wanted to throttle him. And I was at that game, I wanted to throttle him for that because if that had gone in, I thought, oh, why? Uh, back here as well. Yeah, and it's just like, Sacco loves banter, it's not even funny. <laughs> I thought, you were doing that for the banter, you were trying to get everyone in South London to kill you. Because, <laughs> well, no, because to be fair, if it was at the other end of the pitch, the HF would have probably throttled him. Yeah. He's just lucky it was at the other end, at the family end. But Hodgson, long term, no, he won't. Because obviously, we've had to deal with Pardew's complete mess. Oh, I just left. mean this season, Nicky Bill. Yeah, again, depending on the window, because obviously I said before we need a new striker because Benteke cannot be dependent upon. Mm-hmm. Wickham is practically extinct at this point. And if we have to keep playing Zahar up top, I just feel for Andros Townsend because he's going to get a bollock in every week. Because Townsend is expected to do what Wilf does, <coughs> but Townsend isn't that kind of player. So I think if we can keep picking up results here and there, get a couple more wins rather than draws, definitely, but it's not going to be easy. But thankfully for us, we do have quite a fable running going into the last couple of weeks of the season where we've got to play teams around us like West Brom and Brighton. We're obviously in the game in April with Brighton. I'm looking forward to that for obvious reasons. But there's games around us at that time where we can pick up points, where teams around us are playing the bigger boys and have to get results before that. Mm. So short term, yeah, he could keep us up, but I can't see that far ahead. But for now, it's, it's, it's getting better and better. The results are coming in even though the performances aren't the best because obviously under De Boer, performances were there, the results were. So it's a complete uh, 180 on that. Yeah. Okay. Just, just sorry, one question just for mm-hmm. this week. Has there ever been a more contrasted manager appointments from De Boer, De Boer to Hudson? Right. Uh, yeah, Pulis to Pardew. Because obviously we had Warwick in between, but <laughs> to go from Pulis it was pretty bad. these things. Right? <laughs> yeah, you just reminded me of the stuff I forgot about there. Yeah. I mean, like, like all these English managers float around like the Premier League and goes, go to a few different clubs. Palace have had all of them. Like Palace have like all these journeyman <laughs> Premier League managers, Palace have had them at some point or another. So at some He's stage just looking just <laughs> at some stage the you can see the <laughs> Do you, just, <laughs> do you really just have to go as different as they went with the power again? Because we'll obviously get the right system. Well, because you can't just go on this merry-go-round forever. No, but Eventually again, gets back the field thing is, yeah, so. but the thing is, we don't, we don't want to do what Charlton did and get too comfortable by yeah. saying, okay, let's stick with the same manager year in, year out, and then when we're not getting what we expect, which was European football, we sack him, and what happens? Charlton will plummet like a stone. Yeah. Now watching them plummet made me uh, delight because <laughs> it's like strange that you sack the best manager you've had, and and, he, and it all goes Pete Tong, but. Yeah, obviously you've seen we've had Allardyce, Pardew, Pulis, Warnock, Holloway, who is... Oh, see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we've had a whole... We've had the whole... <coughs> um, and ironically... Did Alex Kirby's ever manage it? No. He would have decapitated. He's next. Huh? He's next. No. <laughs> Even <laughs> Parrish knows he's not... Parrish is not that stupid. Well, Hector of football. Well, that's Dougie Friedman, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dougie Freeman, because, because Dougie Freeman obviously set the stone for us to come up, but obviously we have had a bad... Our record with managers under Parrish is shocking. I mean, we had George Burley to start with. He got sacked. Christ, Although, to be fair, we lost 3-0 to Millwall, so he had to be sacked. Yeah. No, no, that's not run shit. We haven't got time to run shit. <laughs> no, no, no. What I'm saying is that our record with managers, we just go through them like it's nothing. Mm. So, sacking De Boer for me was the wrong thing, because I thought we were seeing results, because the Burnley game... A friend of mine works for the FA. He said that Hendrick told him, "How did you not beat us? Because yeah. we were we hammered them." Mm-hmm. And I thought everything but the excuse my French, but bastard net we were hitting post crossbar Hendrick's face. Everything was hitting the but the net. Like 
It's one of those games, isn't it? And we were seeing younger players get more of a chance, which is what our fans have been crying out for. I thought you sacked him too soon. I thought you yeah, so did I. Bit more time. Yeah. I, think pa- I think Palace will stay up there. Okay. Well, I just want to really quickly move on. Then, then um, Leicester, Leicester and Burnley. <coughs> yeah, Burnley actually lost. Well, yeah, yeah. Which, not many teams are going to, um, you know, do that to Burnley. It's usually the other way around. Now, obviously the biggest thing for us was... Um, Robbie Brady getting injured, the knee injury. Look painful. Yeah, the and it looks like it could be a long layout. Yeah, yeah, I think it looks like it could be. He could be out for a few months anyway, which obviously it's not good for him, not good for his club career and everything. But as not coming to worst time, probably for Ireland, where obviously you want him to get back and you don't want this to be a recurring thing. But we don't really have it game of any no up until after like after the World Cup now so he's got to, you know he's got time to recover and get back and everything like that so it's bad for him because he's been in good form for Burnley but he'll come back from it and thankfully it's coming a time after the playoffs and everything like that where now he can you know he doesn't have to worry about having to get back for a World Cup which might be Maybe the only positive from can you getting absolutely humped by Denmark. Can you imagine the conversation if we had got over Denmark? Yeah, the conversation I know. Him right and Calvin now. trying to get back to fitness. Yeah. yeah, but the only thing I'd say is, with, you know, the way Burnley are going, you know, they're trying to push for place in Europe, and it'd be nice to see them push for place in Europe. <coughs> and he would have been one of the main people to help him get there. So in that type of sense, I would have liked to see him be fit. For, oh, for of course, yeah, you don't see him injured. Well, yeah, obviously, yeah, but my point being is... is you know, I would actually like to see, and I'm sure everyone here would like to see them actually push on and get a Europa League spot or something. You know what yeah, I, mean? mm-hmm. I think they still could though. I think they can still push on. I think they'd be, they'd be, he's he's been really good for them, especially yeah. the, not uh, the last thing, but the, the game before that. Um, how did they play? And uh, Chris Ford, he set up the goal and he scored a goal with his right foot. Yeah, uh, what well, they got a Bournemouth, wasn't it? A Bournemouth, yeah. yeah it Bournemouth. But he was like he ran that game. Yeah. You know, I mean, he he essentially won them that game. He's a massive part of Burnley's team as well, so that 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 will kill them. And his link up with Hendrix, they're their best mates as well. You know, yeah. so I mean, he, six yeah, he, he just gives them. Um, Brady just gives Bournemouth the, their their structure, their workman, like, you know, yeah. Um, but he just gives them that bit more, and they're gonna really struggle. I think, but not struggle in in a way that like they're not gonna go down or anything like that. But to yeah. that that next step that you're talking about, European really football, they will struggle with that Brady because he gives, just gives them that. Kind of delivery he offers. Yeah, yeah. You know, from set pieces, yeah. pieces yeah. etc. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, he'll, he'll be back though. That's the only thing. Yes. Yeah. Robbie, if you're watching, we're all. Uh, yeah, there for you. Yeah, and hopefully you're back soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. quickly, I'm just uh, I'm not really <coughs> gonna get into Swans here and like that. They look, you know, although come on, we everybody yeah, scored, scored the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've been waiting for that for a long yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> I think Swansea fans have waited for a goal for a long time to be sure. Not, not as much as us. No. We, it's it's, it's a, ridiculous to say that Wilfred Bonnie's last goal in professional yeah. football was for Stoke against yeah. Swansea in this fixture around this time last year. That's how long it's been since he scored a goal. He's oh. supposed to be a good striker. And it's just... It was. Really Speaking of strikers, so he he's been. got an assist then for a juice goal. Yeah. Peter Crouch is the ages one day. <laughs> like, everyone thought he retired a year and a half ago and then all of a sudden he, he, just, not. he just reappeared like <laughs> and all of a sudden he's just this really effective striker he he's got more assists than though. balls goals now as well yeah. he's got more goals he than that than the again. he's yeah. got more goals inside of Barry Hino as for Stoke in the last year and a half and so I did for 15 they did. so there you go in, 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 right, really quickly who's going down Newcastle Swansea and sorry to say this Brighton fans but Brighton have Albion I suppose it'll tell of in January. Man period. City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United, <coughs> Tottenham in their last six or seven. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be that confident with that. Definitely not better there at all, you know. Uh, Johnny? Who's going down? A week ago, you would have said everything. Uh, uh, as much as I would, would like to joke about it, it was, it was never going to happen. Uh, Swansea are gone. There's a number of teams. I think Palace are going to struggle under Hodgson. Um. Uh, West Ham are in free fall, but they, they could, they are a team that could pull it out. Now. I think it would be a case of what January 
one yeah, yeah, it, like as we touched earlier on, January is so, so key. And I like, think I don't think he can put a a, a post of Sam on right now. I think you'd have to wait till the January transfers probably. But if you're the pick right now, the three that I'm current, I'm current, I'm currently yeah. West Ham are gone, Swansea are gone, and Palace. Sorry, mate. Really, <laughs> really easy for me, and they won't change in January. They won't change in March. Swansea, West Ham, and Newcastle are gone. Rafa won't see out the season with Newcastle, he'll get annoyed and leave. Easy. Mm, I'm probably going to have to go... Swansea, West Ham, uh, I, can't, I, I, can't, I can't pick a third right now. Just go with everything then, it's the safest option. <laughs> <laughs> um, now the same might be in a bit of trouble as well, now you actually I agree with Brighton. Um, Bournemouth I think might still get dragged back into it. I'll go, Callum, I'll, I'll go with Bournemouth to be Callum, nice to Nathan. Yeah, Callum, Wilson, <laughs> Callum, Wilson, Callum Wilson's made a glass. He gets injured again, they will be in a bit of trouble because well, he's he, the only one I realistically see him scoring goals. Does he have more glass on this table? Oh yeah, he's less. He, oh, okay, he is okay. less than Connor Wickham because we have seen Callum Wilson in the last three years. So yeah. we're going to need to get some sort of chart or something like that, more or less. Like, <laughs> 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 what type is that? Yeah. Um, I don't know. He would be at the top of that. Andy Carroll. Owen Hargreaves. Owen Hargreaves. Like, <laughs> Alan, it's the Owen Hargreaves guy. Or Michael Allen. No, the Owen Hargreaves. Owen Hargreaves. Owen Hargreaves. Owen Hargreaves got hamstring strain from sneezing. <laughs> well that's been our Premier League <coughs> talking points uh, thanks very much for watching uh, thanks for the lads for coming in as always and uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments and please for the love of God will you please subscribe we've got 2,000 people on Facebook and nearly 2,000 on Instagram nearly 2,000 on Twitter but you aren't subscribing we need just to start subscribing we're going to have a giveaway for Christmas and uh, unless we get to 1,000 subscribers we're not doing the giveaway have the prizes there just need the subscribers um, we're aiming for a thousand subscribers before Christmas, so uh, tell your granny to subscribe. Uh, it'd be a nice little Christmas present for us, so, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah and just subscribe just so we can shut Paul up going on about this. I'm sick yeah. of this every week. Yeah, so. There you go, <laughs> shut me up for Christmas. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great week.